welcome back to the Hilltop Pillbox here in Abbotsford, British Columbia, Canada, and we're up in the office today doing a quick game of Axis and Allies Zombies. Ah! We're playing solo today. Just going to try something and uh, and see if it works. And of course, you if you're not familiar with Axis and Allies and Zombies, it's a pretty quick game. Uh, typically, you can play it in under a under two or three hours, depending on who you're playing with, of course. Uh, some people play faster than others. And it'll be, uh, it'll be interesting to see how this goes. Now, if you've never played Axis and Allies and Zombies before, nobody builds zombies, but you build infantry. And then the infantry, of course, well, they get turned into zombies when they die. So, the real fun part of this game is if you're the Soviet Union, basically you send everything you've got into Germany because all of your infantry well, when they die, they become zombies, and at the start of everybody's turn, the zombies actually try to take a chomp out of your forces. These are the special dice that you use. So two sides will have an A on it, one side will have a D, and then the rest are blank. So you've got a 50% uh, chance to miss, and you only have a 16.7% chance to actually lose a unit. Uh, but if there's seven zombies in there, well, then you roll seven dice, right? And, yeah, the seven, seven zombies. Oh, <laughs> see, this, this is the roll Hilltop will get. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, all, the, all the misses except for the only hit is one against your guy. And, and then you just lose a unit. And if it's an infantry unit that you choose to you lose, then, of course, you will turn that into a zombie. And the zombies attack on every round of battle. Uh, so that makes things even more interesting. So you can go into a battle, and if there's a bunch of zombies in there, uh, you roll the dice. You've got a, a one in three shot that they're going to kill one of the attacking units even before the battle begins. So that can always be uh, problematic, especially on the Eastern Front. The other thing we have here are the cards. Now some people don't like to play with the cards. I love playing with the cards because, good grief, if you take this game too seriously, you're just not going to enjoy it. This is meant to be fun. And so there's a couple of sections to the cards. You have the Desperate Times, and you're going to add a zombie to Turkey. It is no longer neutral, has an IPC value of 2, right? And it means people can go into it. And of course, as I'm playing, I'm going to have this going on in the background. Um, just have some fun. But then you also have the Desperate Measures at the bottom. These are optional, but these are research, right? So you can gain research. Uh, sometimes you gain units, sometimes you uh, find stuff, you can get free units. Um, there's just a whole bunch of different things. Okay, for this one here, this is nice when you attack this round. Zombies don't get to roll in the first round of combat, so yeah, it can be a lot of fun. Over here, you see that there are the setup charts and all that, and on the back of the setup charts, you've got the costs of everything, but you also have the... Uh, technologies that you can get in this game. And so you got zebra suits and that protects infantry uh, versus zombie attacks. You get the explosives that they do more damage. Chainsaw tanks get to fire before the battle. They get to uh, go take a roll and maybe they'll kill some zombies before it begins. Air dots. Typically aircraft can fly over and take one shot at a zombie and the zombies can't attack aircraft, especially in the air, right? Like they can't, can't jump up and hit them. And, but with the air dodge, you get to take two passes. So if you've got three fighters, you can roll six dice versus zombies and maybe clean them out. Dead Napper Convoys, if you haven't used a transport during that turn, you can place a zombie onto it and go deliver it like infantry to any other spot, which is really cool. And then Zombie Mind Control Array is exactly what it sounds like. You can basically bend the zombies to your will in one territory and have them go do stuff. So... Uh, it's fun to get these things. I, you know, I, and there's a lot of purists I know who will never, you know, they played it once or they never will play it and say, I'm never playing this game because this isn't Axis and Allies. Well, of course, this is, they're, they're just feeding off the name, as it were, uh, Axis and Allies franchise, right? So they took that name, added zombies to it because that's what everybody was doing about 10 years ago, and this is what you got, right? So this is meant to be a real fun, kind of goofy, beer and pretzels kind of a, a game. 
not meant to be taken seriously. Uh, so just have a lot of fun with it, see what happens. Uh, the zombies actually do have uh, an economy, right? So as they get things, as they get different territories, and the way a zombie gets a territory is if they are the only unit there uh, during their turn, during anybody's turn, zombies capture territories. So then they'd have a, an economy of one. If their economy uh, ever gets to, I think it's 23. Actually, I haven't, I haven't played this game in a little while, but once it gets to a certain point, maybe 25 actually, the uh, zombies win the game. So, and uh, that's pretty much it. I guess we better get going because there's a, there's a good chance that the zombies are on the way. Right? Let's see. Even Brad Pitt and his wife, they look kind of worried. What's going on? Hard to say. Hard to say. We'll let you know how it goes. Let you on the Eastern Front right after this. Things are not going so well. These bad, bad, bad zombies chasing all the nice humans. Not fair. And this is a guy, Brad Pitt. He helped his family. Oh, he helped his family and now this guy's trying to kill him. It just doesn't seem fair. And that's something that the Germans are saying at times. <laughs> Actually, it was kind of an interesting round. Um, really, really bad dice for them in some cases, and really good dice for them in others. So, but the Soviets came in here and took this, and they ended up. They had uh, five Russian infantry left, and those five Russian infantry, uh, of course, eventually became zombies as the Germans counterattacked. And yeah, just uh, just a mess, just a mess. Um, but nothing really changed on the Eastern Front except Moscow has bulked up a little bit. We've got a British fighter in Karelia, and the Germans have coagulated all their stuff together, built four tanks. Don't really want to build infantry as the Germans if you can help it. Uh, down here, though, they had some really good success. Only lost one infantry taking Anglo Egypt Sudan, and you can see him now, right there. A little pale, but he's, you know. Gonna go off to work and do his thing. But the zombies actually had a decent round. I'll show you a bit more of what they got, but they ended up getting a guy in, in uh, East Africa here, so he's able to take that dollar from the Brits. In Southeast Asia, the British took it on the chin. They went in there and they actually rolled pretty well. There was a, there was a zombie placed in there, thanks to the cards, and then uh, you know, they got all their hits, but the um, Japanese got uh, their hits, the zombie got, like, everybody hit them, so they ended up with just a tank left over. They were able to kill a Japanese sub and destroyer here in the sea zone for the loss of a sub. And uh, China, nothing really went on in China. You, as, as the Americans in China, all you can build is men, and you want to build men because that'll hopefully slow down the Japanese. Japanese in Manchuria, a tale of two turns really. Uh, there ended up being um, four zombies in Manchuria because the Soviets attacked with two men and an artillery and they all got killed. And the Japanese, obviously, they're losing guys too. So the Japanese went to take it back and uh, they, the card they got was you can transform one zombie in the territory where you have units into one of your infantry. So they did that, now they're down to three and then they wiped them all out and the zombies did get one hit. So there's still one zombie left, but Japan is actually looking pretty good and there's lots of steel, right? That's what you want, you want steel. So Japan built uh, three artillery this turn instead of men. Because if you can get steel out there, at least you're not going to be fighting your guys again, and they're not going to be hurting you. Uh, the Americans, the Navy was left alone because Japan had to send everything, the bombards, everything, into Manchuria. So America is quite a force here in the Pacific. Australia has been emptied. That was to go and help take Southeast Asia. So those guys are all dead. Uh, so if uh, zombies pop up... Um, in a zone, they typically take that zone and the, and the money, but if they're going to take a place that has a factory in it, they have to get uh, the number uh, greater than the number of, uh, of what the territory is. So there need to be three zombies in there in order to take it over. 
I think some people, um, to be honest, I don't even, uh, some people say just be equal, some people say over. We play over because uh, sometimes it doesn't take much for the zombies to get two into there. And so we play uh, to make it one more. Uh, over here in Africa, we talked about that already. And the Americans were able to land in North Africa because it was empty from the two German tanks that came over. And uh, so that was pretty successful. And that's it up there. Up in Norway, Finland, the British were able to land. Of course, a bunch of zombies got created and they'll take a chomp at these two tanks. At least they won't create more zombies if they get a hit. And over here, the Americans built uh, a tank and they're ready with another shipment to head over to Africa or Europe. But as you can see, the zombies uh, showed up in Colombia and Central America. Now the reason why there's no zombie there is because the uh, bomber and fighter came over and they got to take one shot and they zorched it, but uh, didn't want to take a chance to go one plane to each because if you got cold dice on both, then you'd still have zombies there. But now the Americans can roll into there at the end of their turn and collect the money. Now, this is the first time I've ever played this game where nobody has tech after the first round. Nobody. And that really, really worries these guys. They have no idea what to do now. Oh, terrible. That was pretty good timing. I didn't have to edit that. All right, so we're gonna be on to round two here. And we'll see if the zombies can increase their income. They're sitting at four. Will they have more? All right, so here we are at turn three. Things are heating up a little bit. And uh, yeah, it's uh, a big, big turn for the Americans. But unfortunately, things are not going so well over in Israel. Yes. Yeah, here they come. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> So it took out the Japanese home fleet here, uh, but the Japanese still have a carrier and a couple of destroyers down here, so they're not uh, not completely wiped out or anything. A couple of fighters, so they'll probably go take that out here just to get rid of it. And but interestingly enough, they were able to take Southeast Asia, didn't incur any losses, and they had a card that allowed them to move half the zombies from here to here. So there were three zombies, so they moved two into here. You can see India is like this because the Germans blitzed a couple tanks through, killed a couple guys, but uh, lost their guys. There was a fighter and a couple of guys there. And then at the start of the British turn, there was one zombie, or two zombies, and they killed the British fighter in the zombie phase. <laughs> zombies bite. Um, now, they, they can't typically take um, any uh, planes out during a battle. Um, but they can take them out during this phase, so that's pretty bad. Americans were able to kill the remaining German artillery and uh, had some fun there. Air units had a bit of fun, uh, went around and sourced a few things, kind of like the air units uh, in this battle. Oh, he's kind of an air unit there for a second. Um, and so uh, Germany building tanks and artillery, got lots of tanks and artillery at the front. The British had landed their fighter in Moscow, and uh, the Germans are just trying to bulk up. Just trying to bulk up. The British are now landing. Uh, the British, by the way, did get a card that gave, gave them a free tech, and they ended up rolling a two, so they got the uh, Z4 or Z4 explosives, which uh, allows you to now, if you have artillery in a game, you can now uh, take... Um, or kill a zombie with a five or a six. So this is a six on the zombie die, but and that kills a zombie during a battle. But uh, now if you hit with a five, it also, and not just artillery, but all units. So that really does help thin the herd a bit. And the zombies have uh, gone down in, in economy. They're down to a six now. Um, this will be tough to take, take from them, of course. And if they get lucky on these bites here, they're, they're kind of tough to get out of there if you don't put your money into transports. And right now Japan is not going to be putting money into transports. Uh, they got to take care of the American fleet. 
Over here, the British just uh, bulking up, and they killed a couple of zombies in Norway, Finland, and didn't lose anybody. America saw a zombie appear, um, and nothing else is happening down there. All right, so we have a... Oh, well, nothing else is happening. They did do an air dots attack down here and um, missed, so... All right, so while the zombies are... Having some fun here. Good grief. Woo! Always with the guns. And the grenades. Kablamo! Anyway, now all the zombies are going to come down and get them. Smooth move. Alright. <laughs> so we're going to see what happens here on turn four. Been a lot of destruction and everything. I think that the with the Germans building nothing but metal, um, I think they're, they're going to have a good shot at uh, taking Moscow. Um... The Russians are going to be building a lot of infantry, of course, to counter that, because they want zombies on the board uh, to help them. So, we'll see. Oh, boy. Really? I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. Do you prefer fast-moving zombies, like these, and in... Uh, not that they were zombies, but in uh, 28 Days Later? Or do you prefer the slow, methodical ones that are fairly stereotypical of most of the zombie movies? All right. There we go, that is everything. We're gonna be round four in just a minute. Okay, so round five is about to begin and what a difference a turn makes. And uh, I don't know if you know, but we just had a, my wife and I got back from Europe, uh, just going on our 25th uh, wedding anniversary trip. Never been to Europe before, I hadn't. So we went there and had a great time. And the flight back, I gotta tell you, was a lot better than this one. That would have sucked. Anyway, um, yeah, the flight attendants were much, much nicer. And, uh, yeah, they even gave us some champagne. Go British Airways. Very nice. Very nice. Anyway, so here we are. The Japanese were able to come up here and wipe out the American fleet only for the loss of a destroyer because they, they got all the hits they needed to on round one. So the Americans have built here. They spent all their money on a battleship and two destroyers. Uh, to protect their merchant fleet, their merchant transport fleet. America also had the uh, good fortune to get the hidden supply cache. So when you liberate a zombie-controlled territory, you get an extra infantry. And uh, for that, you get to roll a die. And so, of course, when you get that card, whenever you liberate a territory, you basically want to attack wherever you possibly can. So they attacked up here because there had been one put in Western Canada by that card, actually. And so they took that and uh, got an extra tank. And they also liberated Venezuela. Oh, they also liberated Central America. I forgot to roll for that because there was nothing in there. So what we're going to do is we are going to do a real-time roll. We'll figure out what they get in Central America because should I should have put an infantry there, but I didn't even think of it. So we're gonna we're gonna throw an infantry into Central America and let's see what else the Americans get. Here we go. A two and a two gets them. Another artillery. So look at that. Some extra stuff for the Americans. That'll help them out there. All right. So they looks like they've kind of got their zombie problem uh, sewed up. I took a real risk with this because if the zombies do get a hit here. Uh, and take that out. They'll capture that territory on the American turn. So, got to be, got to be uh, pretty careful with that. I didn't notice that till just now. So that happens when you play by yourself. Um, over here, yeah, Moscow fell, and fell hard. Um, there are five zombies in there and four Rus uh, German tanks. And yeah, this is all the Russians that are left on the board, except for the. Sub up there, that is it. And so they have had a pretty rough game, not likely to get any uh, any traction to come back. So they're probably uh, probably done. They have crashed and burned, as it were. And... Like that. Anyway, uh, the British tried to help them out, took Karelia, but when the capital's already gone, you don't actually liberate the territory you take it. So the British took Karelia, stuck some guys into Eastern Europe, 
uh, just to be annoying. And uh, they control the seas up here, so they'll be shuttling guys back and forth. So it's by no means an Axis victory yet, but when Russia's out of the game and, you know, if the Germans can start subduing these zombies, well, they'll, they'll do a little better. But with a little bit of British force here, that could be a problem, and the constant flow could be a bit of a problem as well. Uh, not much to say over here, pretty much status quo. Um, once again, nobody got any tech. This has been the weirdest round. The very first card we had was, if you kill three zombies, you get a free tech. But unfortunately, at the start of the game, there's no zombies. And since then, it's been all about moving zombies or um, getting uh, money for zombies killed or converting zombies into money, all that kind of stuff. It hasn't been tech. So... Only Britain's got the tech, and so they're building artillery. Everywhere they are, they just try to build artillery, because then they can kill zombies. So, All right, so we're going to head into turn five, and uh, Russia, obviously, might not even survive uh, that round. <laughs> they might just have the Caucasus left at the end of their turn, who knows. And then we will uh, see what Germany's going to do. they got a lot of, a lot of zombies, and sometimes the best thing to do is just leave the territory, right? Uh, so if the Germans are still alive at the end of this, they got, I think, seven zombies in there um, and five zombies here, so they could be losing some tanks here. But we'll give you the update as soon as we got it. Coming at you. And don't lose your cool. Hang in there. Things will get better eventually. All right, turn six. Turn six is coming right up. And uh, I'm not sure if Brad Pitt's going to be able to save the day for us. Uh, he did all right on the film, but uh, yeah. So, oh, spoiler alert, I guess I should have said at the beginning of this video. All right. So here we go. We can see a massive buildup of fleets here. The uh, Japanese uh, were able to clean out all the zombies from the territories they're in. They haven't had any zombies placed in their territories, so that makes it nice. They did have one placed up in the Urals, but, uh, or not placed, but the one that was, yeah, I guess one was placed and then it wiped out <laughs> the guy there, so Japan uh, kind of holding on there. Um, and the Americans uh, came out to Midway. They got the card again that lets you get an extra unit. So here they got uh, an extra tank. And over here, they got uh, an extra fighter. Yeah, they got a free fighter there, so good for them. Uh, Taking over a zombie-controlled territory. But the zombies are doing okay. They got 13 here. Now, some of the territories are not very strong in, right? They got one guy here. They got one guy there. One guy. Oh, that's not even held. But these are just one. But some of them, they're a little heftier, right? A little bit heftier. And, uh, oh, I forgot to switch this one out. My bad. Let's see if I actually move that. So we got one, three, five, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So it should be at fifteen. So I didn't. There you go, fifteen, which means that UK is down. Might have to take a little bit of no, they they moved out, so uh you get you still get your money because the zombies don't move until the next round. So uh Japanese rail takes a kang and created no zombies doing it. And, uh, yes, yeah, so the Americans are a little hard-pressed here now. Africa, uh, the British flew their fighter out to Gibraltar, got it out of there. And uh, the British built a battleship in response to the German build. Now, you can only build as many units as you have um, space, right? And this is five, right? This is five. That's all you got. So we are... Uh, uh, Limited. We had a lot of money for Germany. We're up uh, around 50 or something. So, 56, I think. So, they had a lot. So, they just had no, uh, no, uh, no place to build anything, which is unfortunate. So, um, over here in the U.S., right? So, they didn't kill any fighters, and we built a couple, couple more there, uh, just to bulk it up. Hopefully, they don't get a bite. And that's pretty much it for where we're at. So the zombies have been controlled in many areas. Uh, we've kind of relegated them to the center of the board here. 
and that usually helps things out a bit. So, hoping that uh, we can carry on. Uh, the Axis uh, do have an upper hand right now, but the Brits didn't mention it. They actually did land in Western Europe and uh, are threatening Germany, but really Germany's got such a, a decent amount of stuff and they've got a decent economy going. Plus they have no natural enemies over here. They've got some unnatural ones, but yeah, it's all about family. Anyway, in Nova Scotia, which I do have actually family in Nova Scotia. So. Anyway, that is pretty much everything for round six. We're going to do round seven, and we'll let you know how it goes in just a minute. All right, so turn seven. Uh, kind of lost count. <laughs> it's either done or we're about to start it. Uh, but the Americans really took it on the chin here. But the, the people who really suffered were the humans. Yes, the zombies actually got to their threshold of 25. So now we're going to have one more round, and whoever owns the largest amount uh, in IPCs of zombie-free territory will win the game. So as it stands right now, um, I think Japan holds that distinction. Um, actually, possibly America, because they have the eastern and western U.S. have been cleared out of zombies. All right, so they've got that. So we're going we're gonna to play this last round really quickly. Of course, you don't want to... You know, in the last round, it happened during Britain's turn, I believe. So you don't want to build any men after that. So Britain was able to not build men, uh, even though they did. I think it was to take away Germany's chances. And because uh, you just don't want zombies showing up, right? You just don't want one of your guys to die. And then, oh, now there's a zombie and you can't kill it. So uh, we're going to see what happens here at the end. But we do have a zombie apocalypse. If only we had called upon the great Brad Pitt to save us. But we did not plan ahead, so we'll see how it goes. I'll let you know how it goes right after this. Alright, so the game is over, and the zombies actually spread out a bit more. But, uh, so the, the zombies are going to win. But then the way it scores, I for some reason got a little confused, is whoever has the most zombie-free territories under their control uh, wins the game. And uh, that's definitely going to be the Allies. And the reason for that is, is Britain starts with, I think it's like 19 territories. And the zombies actually, they just got them here in the last uh, little bit. They started getting some with the cards. They hadn't come up at all this game. That's why Britain was doing pretty well, actually. Um, but now they, they still have, so they got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So they have eleven territories that are considered zombie. Oh, twelve. Western Canada, I forgot that. Oh, twelve. Well, that's more territories than Germany has, than the USSR has. Uh, America's got 12, I think, 10 or 12 as well. So, you know, Britain's got a real handle on that. So they, they along with America, who is able to get rid of everything, uh, just have far more than Japan and Germany are able to, uh, to hold on to. And as you can see, the British landed in Western Europe. What happened was the, there was a zombie down here. So the German came down um, with a couple tanks, killed it. Brought some tanks here, killed those guys, came over here, and built up a navy so the Brits wouldn't try to land there. <laughs> so the Brits just landed here, and it's a zombie-free territory. And up here, they, they attacked, and it's a zombie-free territory. So all these zombie-free territories now just really add up, and Britain and uh, the Allies end up winning the game. Even though Russia fell. Even though Russia fell, they ended up winning the game. Oh, I... <laughs> it is... It all blended in. I even forgot to roll that. So let's roll that out. Why not? Here comes Japan. Three tanks at three. Got them. American plane at four with a miss. All right. Well, there you go. And Japan. Well, Japan does what Japan does. They'd make an extra couple bucks in the Caucasus, and it's a zombie-free territory. But they just don't have enough of those. They've got one, two, three, four, five, six. They got that one. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Right, and they had a pretty good game. Oh, 
11. They got 11. So that's um, it's just not enough to to compare with you know what Britain has, and if Britain is able to keep the zombies at bay, and these cards, like I said, didn't come up to the last round, uh, it's very difficult to to compete with the Allies. They just have way too much stuff. Now, if it turned out that the Axis and the Allies had the same number of zombie-free territories, then you would do IPC value, right? in which case the Allies are likely going to win again, just because of the strength of America. Uh, you know, if, if, and, and it doesn't matter whether they're zombie free or not, right? So you got 16 bucks in Eastern and U Western US right there. Mexico and Central America takes it to 20. Brazil puts it at 22. Uh, usually this is all gone. And Alaska puts it at 24. Maybe a hang on to Midway and Hawaii is 26, right? So right there, you, you likely have more than Japan has or has ever had during the game. Uh, Germany might have a bit more, but then again, you got all this British territory uh, with some IPC value to it. So, congratulations to the Allies. I hope you enjoyed watching the game. We're creeping ever closer to the 3,000 subscriber mark. Uh, setting up a really good giveaway for that, but I need another 50 or so. Another 50 subs. So, hey, tell your friends. A little shameless self-promotion here. Tell your friends. Uh, and like we do for all of our all of our uh, access knowledge channels, like get out there, go and see all the different channels that are out there. You got General Hand Grenade, you got Sky Marshal, formerly known as Panzer King, right? You got GI Joe. I'm gonna forget somebody. Hambone HQ. You got Detroit uh, at the Garrison. Um, mm, a whole bunch more. I I shouldn't have started that list because I knew I'd forget somebody. So. You're all wonderful people. Don't even worry about it. It's a Saturday morning, having some fun. About to head out and buy an upright freezer. Uh, used, so wish me luck. All right, have yourselves a great day, for, folks. Thanks for watching the zombies. And as we always say here at the Hilltop Pillbox, thank your friends for playing. Hug your loved ones. And as always, may the dice be with you.